Hello. Hello. Welcome. If you're new to some of my work, I just want to say welcome. I'm really thrilled that you're here. And if you've been following me for a while, welcome back. Welcome back. I've been wanting to do this series for quite a long time. Full disclosure, though, it feels super intimidating to talk about what is yoga when it's so massive and so huge. And I'm just, you know, a little peon uh, learning it from where I am. But I figured the idea is that I truly, authentic, authentically and genuinely believe that I am walking the path of yoga in my life. I believe and feel that I am truly living yoga. And so I've decided I'm going to share with you what I've learned and distill the knowledge that my teachers and my own experiences have handed down to me hoping that it sort of lights the torch inside of you, that you will take what you get from this video, the series, and you'll take it and you'll make it yours and then perhaps pass it on to someone else. So um, I'm just diving in. I'm just going to go for it because it's so, so, so important. And it has made such a huge difference in my life that um, I want you to know about it. I want you to know about it. So I have my notes in front of me. I have my coffee. Yes, I do drink coffee and I'm a yogi. Cheers. Let's dive in. So this is going to be a five series video uh, uh, program. And this video is for you to decide if you want to take that video series or not. But even if you decide not to take the series after this one video today, you can still follow this path by jumping in one of these Ahimsa Yoga classes. You can uh, come into my inner circle where we are doing the path of yoga. We are actually doing what we talk about in this course there. But regardless, you could be doing your meditations. You could be doing some other classes with uh, other teachers. You could be taking some books learning self-study. So part of yoga is turning on that own wise voice, that own inner wisdom. Um, sometimes you need to have outside uh, teachers to sort of spark you up. And then life experience is like 80 to 90% of the learning. So take a little dabble, do ya, And then go walk the path for yourself. Let your own organic interests and curiosities sort of find your way, um, whether or not you take this course. But I do hope you take this course because it's going to be a nice overview of the whole uh, totality of what in my level of understanding yoga can be. Okay. So first of all, I thought what I could do is help you understand sort of what holds people back from doing yoga, from doing yoga. And I just wanted to throw out a couple of ideas here so that you could know if this is going to resonate with you. Oftentimes people uh, see yoga as a place where I'm not flexible enough to do yoga, or I don't know the yoga poses or the, the pre-planned sequences. So I will be lost and everybody will be doing a bunch of stuff and I will, I won't know what to do. Um, people think it's a religion or a cult or somehow they are looking where it's not going to be uh, for them. That in and of itself is part of what yoga teaches us. When we are looking at separation, when we are looking at the differences between something and us, it is sort of pulling us into the separate idea. So the idea is where does it attract you? What is interesting about it? What do you see that might be resonating with you? So that's the first thing. If you sort of look at yoga as something that you can't do or that's not right for you or that you don't like, what is that about? What are the reasons that you feel that way? And sort of excavate that a little bit and notice. Um, they think that their their hamstrings or their bodies aren't capable of doing yoga. For some reason, they have an injury, a new hip, uh, scoliosis. They might have some uh, weak abdominal muscles after having uh, giving birth. And so they don't feel ready. They want to get ready to get ready for yoga. And I always like to say it's like getting ready for uh, having kids. You're never ready to have kids, right? You're never ready. You never have enough money to have kids. You never have enough stability to have kids. You're never going to have enough knowledge to have kids. It really is learning how to build the plane as you fly it. Okay. So putting ourselves in this idea of lack is what yoga teaches us to sort of move through or the differences teaches uh, yoga teaches us how to move through. So what the heck is yoga? What is yoga? So one of the definitions I love uh, the most is yoga is an approach to health and well-being to promote 
a harmonious collaboration between the three components of what it means to be a human being. I know it's a lot. The three components are, we are bodies, we are minds, and we are spirits, or we could say breath or life, okay? So yoga is an approach, it's a path to collaborate health and well-being, right? Health and well-being in a harmonious collaboration to promote our body, mind, and spirit connection. So let's first define what is health. What is health? So in yoga, it's always about balance, always about balance. So it doesn't matter if you eat super clean and super well, and you are the right size or the right weight, and you exercise regularly, three cardio classes and three, this is, this, this, and you're angry all the time. That's not healthy because they all sort of harmoniously collaborate that body, mind, and spirit. So health is balanced. If you meditate every day and, or not every day, but quite often, and you, you know, appreciate really grateful for the relationships that you have or nature around you, and you're walking with a sense of peace and you have cancer, you could be more healthy than someone who's angry all the time because you are more in balance. So it's not about, you know, what do your charts say in uh, the doctor's office? It's about how do you feel? How do you feel when you wake up after you've had a good night's sleep or a good night? Are you going to the bathroom every day? Are you balanced in your body? How do you feel in your relationships? How do you feel in your life? That is what we consider healthy. What is well-being? Well, very similarly, well-being is a filter of your life where you feel pretty darn content, right? Even though things aren't perfect, maybe the bills haven't gotten paid. Maybe you have a little bit of strife with you and a teenager in your life. Maybe, maybe you're worried about some, some sort of disorganized leadership at work, right? Maybe some things are not perfect, but there is a general all feeling of contentment in your life. You feel pretty joyful, pretty happy knowing that life is 50, 50, right? Some days are really rainy and some days are really sunny. And sometimes it feels like 80, 20 or 90, 10, but generally for most of us, it's about a 50, 50 life, but we still have this feeling of abundance and, and joy in our lives. Okay. So that's what we talk about when we think about this idea of what is it now, if you are interested into diving in as to what is the overview of yoga and how literally does it work? How does it work physically in our body in those exercise classes? How does it work in our minds? How does it work for our spirit? How does it work overall? And what is a path to wellness? What is a path to feeling that way? I'm going to end this first video for you by, by just suggesting one thing. We say that the goal of yoga, right? The goal of yoga is to lift the veil of suffering, okay? To lift the veil of suffering. What causes us to suffer is this idea that things should be a certain way, that we expect certain things to go, you know, the way we like, or this idea that we don't know who we are, right? We're constantly trying to find things to make us happy because we don't know what, you know, we say is the residing in the true oneness, the true essence, the truth of who you are. So lifting the veil of suffering is what yoga is all about. And so if that is interesting to you and you want to take this course, I would love for you to take it. But again, as I said, even if this video is all that you watch, you can walk the path of yoga without even knowing what the path of yoga is by showing up in some yoga classes consistently. Wonderful teachers here at Ahimsa, wonderful classes that will meet everybody right where you are and reading, you know, uh, looking into opening your mind into other people's thoughts and opinions about politics or, or religion or, or the way that they look at that work environment, opening your mind to maybe doing things a little different than what you're doing is walking the path of yoga. Okay. As always, I'm going to come a little closer to you. As always, may this work be such deep benefit to you as it has been for me and welcome to this path. Deep bows, so much love and namaste.